everyone. Welcome to Learning at 11th R. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about sequential circuits. But before we get into all that, the digital circuits are broadly classified into two categories. So if you look at it, we have the combinational circuits and the sequential circuits. The sequential circuits are further classified under synchronous and asynchronous. Now, what is the difference between a combinational and a sequential circuit? So let us consider this black box to be a combinational circuit. CLC stands for combinational logic circuit. So the output of these CLC circuits is going to depend only upon the present input. So such circuits are called combinational circuits. In case of sequential circuits, there is going to be a memory element that is going to be involved in it. And this memory element is going to play a very crucial role in that the output of these sequential circuits is not only going to depend upon the present inputs, but it is also going to depend upon some past inputs. So the past inputs obviously will have to be stored in some memory elements, which is again fed back to these circuits and then we get the output. So if we are able to draw a block diagram for the sequential circuits, we can say that it is going to be made up of the combinational logic circuits with the present inputs and there is going to be a memory element that is going to be involved here. And the output of this memory element is fed back as the input to the combinational circuit. So this is the past input. And this is going to be my present input. Both of which are fed together to some combinational logic circuit after which we get the output. So this therefore becomes a sequential circuit in the sense that only when one particular event has occurred and we are able to get the output of that event, only then can we feed it as the input for the next instance because only then it will be acting like a past input. So only when one event occurs, the next event will be able to occur. So that brings in the sequential nature of this circuit. Now, if the output of these sequential circuits is going to be affected by the changes in the inputs, but only at specific clock instance or at specific instances of time determined by some clock pulse which governs it. In that case, they are called synchronous circuits, synchronous sequential circuits because these circuits are going to be in sync with a particular clock. So the inputs might change, but the changes in these inputs would be reflected at the output only at specific clock instances. Now, what is a clock? So a clock is nothing but rising and falling pulse edges put together and a train of such pulses. So the outputs reflected due to the changes in the inputs might happen during a rising edge or a falling edge of the clock or at the level of the clock. So there are uh, three parts to this clock pulse, the rising edge, the falling edge and the level. So depending upon this, we can observe the changes in the input at the output. So such circuits are sequen sequential but synchronous sequential circuits. In case of asynchronous circuits, there are only going to be some delay elements involved in the circuits which cause the sequential nature of the circuits to be present. So there is not going to be any clock as such that is governing the asynchronous circuits. Therefore, as soon as there is a change in the input, there will be a change in the output after a certain amount of delay and it is not in sync with any specific clock. 
such circuits are called asynchronous circuits so having said that let me tell you a little bit more about various differences between something called a latch and flip flops there's a very basic difference between latches and flip flops although both latch and flip flops form the basic elements for sequential circuits so if we observe closely latches check their inputs continuously and reflect the changes in their inputs at the output whenever the input changes whereas flip flops are made up of a combination of latch and clock and uh, flip flop also checks the inputs cons consist consistently or constantly but the changes in the inputs cause changes in the outputs and these changes are reflected only at specific time instances governed by the clock so this is the very basic difference between a latch and a flip flop so to say a latch can be considered as an asynchronous sequential circuit whereas a flip flop can be considered as a synchronous circuit let us now look at the different types of latches that are available to us so latches are basically of four types we have the sr latch the jk latch the d latch and the t latch let us look at each of these latches in details and see how they behave and uh, how the outputs of these latches change with the changes in their inputs let us look at the sr latch first now sr stands for set reset now as the name suggests these are the exact functions that these inputs perform so if i consider this to be a black box there are going to be two inputs to it one is s the other is r and there are going to be two outputs to a latch one is say q the other output is the complement of q now we are going to denote this output as qn and qn bar where n stands for the present time instant why is this important this is because these latches have a memory element involved in it and they are going to depend upon some past values so the past output is going to get fed back as the current input and therefore the concept of n minus 1 being a past instant okay uh, an instant in the timeline that has already occurred this concept is also involved in these latches now having said that let us look at how the sr latch actually works we can implement the sr latch using both nand and nor gates so let me show you the nor implementation of the sr latch so here we are going to have two nor gates the output of the upper nor gate is q the lower one being q bar this input is r this input is s and this is how the output of the the present output is going to be fed back into the input at the next instant so let's look at how this works but before that let me draw a small um let me say truth table in this case right now i'll call it as a truth table where uh, s and r are my inputs q and q bar with n as the subscript so present outputs right so these are my outputs 
So if there are two inputs, I can have four combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. As the name suggests, this is going to be set and this is going to be reset. When both are 0, there is going to be no change in the output. So whatever was my past output, that will get carried forward to my present output. There is going to be no change. So let me write it as NC. When my reset input is 1, my output is going to get reset. Therefore, the complemented version is going to be 1. So the output is going to get reset no matter what it was. So if uh, QN was 0, it will remain 0. If it was 1, it will become 0. It will get reset. So that is this input. In this case, where the set is 1, no matter what my previous QN minus 1 was, the output is going to get set. So if my QN minus 1 was 0, QN will become 1. If QN minus 1 was 1, QN will remain 1. So no matter what my previous output was, now it is going to get set because my set input is 1. So the complemented version of it is going to be 0. Now, if both of them are 1, what happens? So we'll have to find that out and I'll explain the other three cases using this NOR implementation. So let me consider that QN was say 0, therefore QN bar will be 1. Let's uh, observe the first input. So both of them are 0, 0. So here, since uh, this is 0, 0 will come into this input of NOR gate. So both the inputs of the NOR gate are 0, which means the output is going to be 1. So let me use purple for that. And this 1 is going to get fed over here. 1 and 0, the output for NOR gate for the inputs 1, 0 is going to be 0. So if you observe, the previous uh, outputs were also 0, 1. And the present, after the inputs have become 0, 0, the present output is also is now 0, 1. So therefore, there has been no change in the output because the set and reset inputs of the SR latches 0, 0. Now, let us consider the second case. So here, let me consider that uh, my QN was 1. My reset input has become 1 now. So it was something because of which QN became 1, therefore QN bar became 0. But now the inputs have changed in such a manner that S is 0 and R is 1. So in this case, what happens? So if you look, look at this, 0 from QN bar comes into this NOR gate. 1 and 0 makes the output of this NOR gate as 0. Now this 0 enters here. So 0, 0, the output will become 1. So if, if you observe closely, QN was 1 and it has got reset to 0. If we would have considered QN to be 0, it would have remained 0 when the reset input of SR latch is 1. So that is the second. In the third case, the set input is considered to be 1. And the reset input is considered to be 0. So here, let me now assume the outputs accordingly. It could be anything, but just to show that the output gets set, we are going to consider QN to be 0. So here, when I say QN, it means that it is my um, current output. And I'm going to look at the next instant. So therefore, I'm going to look at Qn as my present and Qn plus 1 as my 
next output. So in that case, when I look at QN plus 1, QN becomes my past value, right? So it is in reference with time. So when I say QN is QN minus 1, it still means that the, the present and the next value is going to be the same. So if I say this output is QN plus 1, I can also represent it in this manner. The next output is going to remain as QN. So this means that the present uh, and the next instances uh, do not experience any change for the inputs 0, 0. So I hope the concept of N, N minus 1 and N plus 1 is clear to you all. So let's move on. Considering QN is 0 and QN bar is therefore 1. And now we are going to look at this input coming over here. So this is 0. So 0 and 1 put together is going to make this 0. And 0 and 0 put together is going to make this 1. So if you observe, QN, the present was 0. It has got set to 1 in the next instant. So therefore, this third case has been satisfied. Now, if uh, both S and R inputs are 1, what happens? So let us consider that scenario and uh, consider that uh, this was 0 and 1 previously. Both S and R are 1. So now, if you observe 1 and 1 put together, the output is going to be 0. 0 and 1 put together, again, the output for this is also going to try and reach 0. But this is not possible practically because this output is going to be the complement of this output. Therefore, if 1 is 0, the other should be 1. But looking at this scenario, now that this has become 0 again, what will happen? The 0 will go into this input. And 1 and 0 again, the output will become 0. And this uh, 0 will come to the second OR gate. 1 and 0, this will remain 0. So what happens is both QN and QN bar try to uh, raise to the value 0. And which is practically not possible. Therefore, we should not provide the input 1, 1 to the SR latch. Because the output for the input 1, 1 of SR latch is undefined. So let me write out the uh, generalized truth table for the SR latch. So if I say this is the next instant, QN being the current, QN plus 1 being the next state, looking at the four combinations, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, 0, 0 is no change. 0, 1 is when the next output gets reset. Therefore, QN plus 1 bar will become 1. 1, 0, when the set input is 1, the output will get set. Therefore, the complemented version should be 0. And we are not supposed to provide 1, 1 as the input to the SR large because of the uh, the racing condition which arises and therefore this is going to be undefined or indeterminate. So this is called as the characteristic table of the SR latch. In this manner we can implement the D latch, the JK latch and the T latch using both NAND and NOR gates and also derive the characteristic table for these. In this video, I shall restrict uh, the contents to SR latch alone. In the upcoming videos, I'll show you the working of JK, D and T latches. If you have any queries, please don't hesitate to post them in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching.